Ever wondered how a jet engine works? Well, it's a mix of science and black magic. Science because it can be explained and it obeys the laws of physics. Black magic because, you know, the more you try to explain it, the more confused most people get. But actually, the principle is surprisingly simple. In short, cold air goes in and hot air goes out. The force of the outblowing hot air is what propels the plane forward. Think of it like a balloon. You blow air into a balloon. The more air you blow in, the more it gets compressed. When you let the balloon go, the outgoing air propels the balloon forward. If you paid attention in physics class, it should sound familiar to you. It's Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Whoop -de -doo. What does it all mean, Basil? It simply means air goes out in one direction, balloon goes in the other direction. Easy, right? But how is cold air turned into hot air and forced out in the back? Most modern airliners use what is called a turbofan engine. With just the name, you know it has a fan and it has a turbo. Well done, genius. But the truth is, at its most basic, a jet engine consists of five crucial parts to make it go spitty spitty. We have the fan, the compressor, the the combustion chamber, the turbine, and finally the exhaust or the nozzle at the very end. At the very core of the engine, there's a shaft. Both the turbo and the fan and compressor are mounted onto the same shaft at opposite ends of the engine. Together, these parts are all responsible for the basic principle of most modern jet engines, which is this. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. And no, 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 hold your horses. We're not talking about an R-rated adult movie here. What I mean is, okay. Forget about it. It's just going to sound the same no matter how I try to explain it. But the thing is, each of those five parts work together to achieve suck, squeeze, bang, and blow. And it all starts with the fan. The fan sucks in an insane amount of air into the engine. From the fan, the air goes to the compressor and yes, you guessed it. This is where the air gets squeezed and compressed. And in case you're wondering why the air needs to be compressed, it's because compressed air is a lot easier to ignite. You can think of the compressor like a normal house fan, only it's a series of fans compressed together. These fans get smaller and smaller as the air progresses. And between the blades are also a series of airfoil-shaped stationary fins that do not move at all. These are called stator blades. Together, the rotating blades and stator blades squeeze and compress the air as it moves through them. Remember that balloon from the beginning of the video? Well, it's almost the same principle as when you squeeze a balloon filled with air. That compressed air is now heated as well and when mixed with fuel, it's perfect for catching fire. That brings us to the next part, the combustion chamber. This is where it all goes bang. The combustor itself also consists of several parts. First, the air flows through a diffuser, which slows it down. The air is then passed into a dome and a swirler, which creates a turbulence in the air to make it easier to mix more efficiently with the fuel. Then, fuel is introduced into the heated compressed air via a fuel injector. The actual ignition happens in the combustor's liner, where the fuel and air mixture is initially set alight with an igniter, when the plane is fired up for the first time. After that, the igniter is switched off and the engine keeps running on its own. All it takes is a tiny spark for that fuel and air mixture to go bang and to create a massive explosion. That superheated air from the explosion flows through the turbine and blows out the back through the nozzle in a much higher force than the air that was initially sucked into the engine. And that's where Newton's third law comes back in. When that super hot air is finally blown through the turbo and out of the exhaust, it creates a little something that scientists like to call thrust. It's the thrust that pushes the plane forward. But remember we said that the turbine is mounted to the same shaft as the fan and compressor. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Not all the air goes directly into the engine's core and out of the exhaust. The clever folks with the white lab coats also have another term they like to throw around. Bypass. Bypass is the air that goes around the engine between the outside of the core and the outer shell of the engine. But why bypass? There are two ways to increase the power or thrust of an engine. One way to do it is to increase the speed of the air that goes through the engine. That's where you see those awesome flames bursting out of the back of a jet fighter engine. It looks pretty cool, but it's ineffective for a large commercial airliner. Plus, imagine those happy flyers fainting or suffering heart attacks when the plane's engines shoot out massive streams of fire. Oh, come on. No, thank you. The other way to increase engine thrust is to increase the volume of air that goes through the entire engine. Thus, enter bypass. And get this, bypass accounts for about 80% of the engine's thrust. 
But to increase the volume of air, you need to increase the size of the fan. So the bigger the fan, the bigger the bypass, but also the bigger the engine. To give you an idea, the engine on a Boeing 777X has a fan diameter of 3.4 meters. To put it into perspective, the engine's overall diameter is about as wide as the fuselage of a Boeing 737. Basically, you can park a small car inside the engine, widthwise. Insane, right? But it gets more insane. That massive beast of an engine sucks in just over 1.5 tons of air per second. Yes, per second. That's the weight of three horses per second. Luckily though, planes don't run on horses. That would be messy. But anyway, most of that air goes around the engine as bypass to drastically improve thrust. But how is bypass created? The turbine uses a design similar to that of the compressor. It also has spinning blades and a set of stationary stator blades. As the air spins the turbine blades, it turns the shaft, which, as we've said, is also connected to the fan and the compressor. As the fan spins, it draws massive amounts of air around the engine. That air is also forced through a narrowing engine housing at the rear of the engine before it meets the superheated air bursting out the exhaust. Together, the bypass and the blowout from the exhaust create a significantly higher thrust. Not only are turbofan engines more efficient and stronger, they are also much less noisy. Again, just think of a fighter jet with its deafening roar. But if turbofan engines are so much more powerful and efficient, why not put them on fighter jets as well? The answer is pretty obvious if you think about it. Take a few seconds to mull it over. If you still don't have the answer, go ahead and facepalm yourself. Turbofan engines use a stupidly big fan to suck in extra air around the engine. As we determined, a large fan means a large engine. It also means a heavier engine. A larger and heavier engine means stronger, larger wings. It also means more ground clearance. Basically, it means a bigger plane altogether. All these factors completely defeat the purpose of a fighter jet that's meant to be small and nimble and highly maneuverable, don't you think? Sometimes, bigger is not necessarily better. Let's just leave it at that, shall we? And here's another interesting little thing you may scratch your head at. If the air that blows out the back of an engine pushes the plane forward, then how can a plane reverse? Because yes, planes can actually reverse using their engines. Sure, you've sat at an airport waiting for your flight. Then you may have seen this guy in this little truck, pushing a plane back. But planes can actually reverse by themselves with the use of a neat little trick called thrust reversers. If you had a window seat near the wing of a plane before, you would have seen it on touchdown. See these flappy things opening up? Well, they are thrust reversers and they help the plane to slow down by redirecting the air forward. Once again, enter Newton. Forward air will want to push the plane backward. However, thrust reversers are designed for landing, and their primary role is not really to reverse. But if planes can reverse by themselves, why not use it all the time? There are several reasons, and some are scary. In 1982, Air Florida 90 crashed into the icy Potomac River shortly after takeoff, partly due to the use of thrust reversers before taking off. It was a snowy, stormy day, and tow trucks couldn't pull the plane back from the boarding gate for it to move onto the runway. To save time, the pilot engaged the thrust reversers to pull the plane back using the engines. But the pilots made one crucial mistake. They never switched on the engine's de-icing system. The de-icing system warms the incoming air at the front of the engine as it is being sucked in. With the de-icing systems never switched on, any air sucked into the engines will freeze. And that's exactly what happened when the pilot engaged the thrust reversers, kicking up snow that got sucked back in through the front of the engines. It was a fatal error that caused the lives of 78 people. Thrust reversers can also kick up debris on the ground and suck it back into the engines, just like it did with Flight 90 snow. But kicked up debris also makes it hazardous for ground crew and nearby planes and structures. Thrust reversers also use a lot of fuel and contribute to noise pollution. And, um, well, if you look closely at the sides of the cockpit, you'll notice there's something crucial missing. Yep, planes don't have side mirrors. Pilots can't see behind them. Many planes today are banned from using thrust reversers on the ground. But if you ever see a plane on the tarmac magically reversing without this guy in this truck, then it's the thrust reversers. Okay, so maybe it's not witchcraft or voodoo magic that makes a jet engine work, but just a bit of clever engineering and the laws of physics. 
Remember, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Just maybe don't ever use that out of context.